Hello, my name is Daniela Lacchioma. I'm from the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil. Uh, I would like to thank Angela Belia and the organizing committee for this invitation. I will be presenting a pre-Columbian theme, the underworld dances in Moche art. The Moche occupied the north coast of Peru, approximately between 100 before Christ and 600 after. Uh, the north coast of Peru is desertic and very dry, uh, crossed by rivers that come down from the Cordillera of the Andes to the Pacific Ocean and the Mo uh, forming valleys. So the Moche occupied these valleys and Moche political organization was very organized on these valleys. Each valley had its own ruler. So these valleys are important for understanding uh, Moche groups and Moche organization. Uh, Moche ceramics is very well known for its prolific themes like uh, scenes of the everyday life, uh, ceremonies, processions, hunting, fishing, uh, and a lot of other other scenes and themes. Uh, it's very pictorial, so Moche art is very well known for its scenes. There is an important difference uh, in the dances that are depicted in the world of the living and in the world of the dead. So dances in the world of the living are painted in Moche art, as you can see in this example, and when dances are in the world of the dead people, we can see that they are in relief. They are not painted. This is an important difference and we will see it in the next slides. So the underworld dances are always in relief, as you can see here. I analyzed 124 bottles, artifacts, uh, with dances of the underworld, with uh, skeletons, dancing and playing pan pipes. Five different groups were found, so I classified it in five different groups that I will show to you. And these groups can be related to the valleys that we have seen before. So the first group are the pan pipe duels. Here uh, we can see the bottle from the Larco Museum and a rollout that Larco Museum provided to me. This was made by one of the artists of the museum. So we can see here that we have penpipe duels. Can you see over here? And the other characters are dancing and there are women carrying babies. And there is this uh, character that we will see in the other scenes as well. He's carrying a manioc plant, a manioc tree. This is an exception. It's the only underworld dance that is painted. Uh, this is a fantastic bottle. It is in the Berlin Museum. It is founded in the collection of the Berlin Museum uh, today. And it's an exception, it's a different bottle. It is painted, but you can see here the dead characters playing pan pipes with stars over their heads. And there is a drum player as an appendix of the bottle. Uh, the group two is formed by pan pipe duels floating over an, a warrior or a ruler. Can you see it here? The pen pipers now are like floating. They are still dead. There are still the, the, the dancers still appear here in, on the scene. Women carrying children, the manioc carrier. There is a small drum player here in the middle of these two characters that are fighting. Uh, so it is very common to find the, the groups, the, this group of vases of bottles with the pan pipe floating over a ruler, a warrior, like we can see here from this, in this bottle of the Larco Museum. And here too. Can you see it here? The pan pipers floating uh, over the warrior, like receiving the warrior probably in the underworld, in the world of the dead. Here we have the rollout, so you can see it better. The two pan pipers playing over the warrior and the small drum player here. Uh, the third group 
is formed, it's centered on trios of pen pipes and drums. So, as you can see here. Now, the pen pipers have a small drum player between them. And here you can see it also. There are two groups, two trios uh, of pen pipers and drummers on the scene. And the other characters as well, dancing, carrying the manioc. The fourth group uh, is composed by trumpet players. It's a small group, but I have found it, so I decided to consider it. And Marie Hockingen named it the entrance in the underworld because the image is all centered in this individual. Can you see him here? He's passing from one place to the other. The scene is divided in two, the upper part and the part uh, below. So this character is passing from one to the other and some skeletons are helping him. And there are musicians and dancers in the scene uh, and we can consider it a uh, uh, dance of the underworld because of that. So we have two pen pie players in this part of the scene and one pinnet playing the canas, which is a tubular flute that we have not seen before in the other underworld dances, because the tubular flute in Mochard is usually played by living uh, individuals. And here we can see a couple, uh, and these characters carrying spheres behind them. In some interpretations, it can be the semen, the fertilizer. Uh, so here we have the dancers. This guy is uh, on a llama, right? And we have dancers here and over here in every part of it. So this is a dance of the underworld, but a more complex um, narrative of it. And we have the pen pipers, the dancers, and another instrument here, which is the the tubular flute, the kena. So uh, here there are two interpretations for the scene. Uh, here I made like I was dividing the scene, categorizing the scene in smaller parts. Steve Bourget, which is a Canadian archaeologist, he interprets uh, in his uh, writings that this character is going from the underworld to the world of the living. He's passing from the world of the dead to the world of the living. He would be crossing to the upper part. He would be, uh, he would be born in the world of the living. And Hockingham has the opposite interpretation. She thinks this character is going from the world of the living to the world of the dead. Which would be the correct interpretation? Well, based on the symbologies of the sound instruments in the Andean ethnomusicology uh, studies, I have uh, I, I made my own interpretation, and I believe Hawkingham is right, and I will ex explain why. I think this character is passing from the world of the living to the world of the dead. Oh, here, uh, I just put this uh, so you can understand that in Moche art, all these characters are found in many other bottles, in other vases, in sculptural forms. So we have uh, the, the couple here. The peanut playing the kena is very common in Moche art. So here is a peanut playing the, the kena and here he is playing it as well, the same instrument. Uh, these bottles with peanuts playing uh, tubular flutes are very common in Moche art in museums. Here we can see the pen pie players, the skeleton pen pie players, like the warriors that are dancing in Moche under war dances. So the pen pipes are usually related in Moche art to the world of the dead. Uh, many scenes show uh, that pen pipes uh, are being played in the world of the dead, uh, in the underworld. As we can see here, they are like disputing, they are fighting for this pen pipe that is falling from the sky, and they are in the world of the dead. 
And here we can see dead characters playing pan pipes. So pan pipes are very well known for its correlation with the word of the dead and rituals for the dead in the Indian world until today. Turban. And we have this peanut playing, pen, uh, playing tubular flutes. So it's very, this opposition between pen pipes and tubular flutes is very well known, it's very classic in Indian cosmologies. Henry Stubbert is an English ethnomusicologist. He worked all his life in Bolivia in the Andes and he got to the conclusion that in certain moments of the calendar, pan pipes are played, in other moments, tubular flutes are played. So they are not played at the same time, they have the right moments for it, right? So he says, one of the most remarkable characteristics of rural music in the Bolivian Andes is the strong association of certain musical instruments, tone colors, genres and tunings with the agricultural cycle and festive calendar. Music should be played in its appropriate context and until recently, performance of musical instruments outside their specific season was likely to be punished by community authorities. Uh, so it's a subversive practice to play the wrong instruments in the wrong moments of the calendar, in the wrong epochs or seasons. So this is very important in, in Indian cosmology. So that's why I believe uh, the character is passing from the world of the living to the world of the dead, because I believe that the pan pipes are bringing him to the world of the dead. So uh, studying and analyzing the symbolic roles of the musical instruments, we have uh, this, this answer. Uh, if the character is going from the word of the dead, dead to the word of the living or the contrary. Uh, here we have the regional and chronological distribu distribution of the uh, dances of the underworld. So I made a classification here of the kind, the group, the kind of bottle, if it's stirrup spout bottle, lateral spout bottle, the main characters of it and the valleys that they were found. Um, the great majority of the bottles that I analyzed was from the Larco Museum in Lima. And these bottles were excavated many years ago by Larco, Rafael Larco and his team. And they had the registers uh, of which valleys they were found. It was all registered. So I got to this, I got these registrations and I got to the conclusion that some uh, of this narrative, some groups are related to certain valleys. And there are groups that are only found in one valley, like group two, the, the group where the Pempai players are floating over the warrior, they are found only in the Chicama Valley and the phases. So here I put the map so it can be more visual. So there is a correlation of the groups of underworld dances with valleys. This means that probably each valley had its tradition in representing, depicting the dance of the dead and their uh, and specific characters. Like Shikama Valley, uh, only in the Shikama Valley, uh, the pen pipe, the pen pipers were floating over the warrior. Well, uh, I think that's it. I would like to thank to Angela Belia, Consiglio Nazionale delle Ricerche, Institute of Heritage Science, and all the institutions that supported uh, my investigation, the University of Sao Paulo, the Larco Museum. Thank you very much.